Hey, Internet, welcome back to another episode of Camera Dads. It's been a little while, but that's okay. We're dads. I am Camera Dad Phil, and with me on the other side of the Internet is my brother and co-host, Camera Dad Simon. How are you doing, Simon? Hey, everyone. I'm doing great, Phil. Hope you're doing really well tonight. Yeah, doing good. Pretty excited about this show. Excellent. Me too. What are we talking about tonight? Uh, Three-legged camera holders. Three-legged camera holders. So like a... Uh, a tri-legged camera yeah, holder? Yeah, like a tri... Um, you know how they call humans bipedal? Yes. It's like a tripedal hmm, is like a word for like it. Like a tripod. Yeah, like that. We're talking about tripods tonight. Sweet, and talking about tripods. All right. Yeah, we've, we've talked about different gear before, but we've never actually gone into detail about, about tripods and what they might be good for, what we use them for. So let's kind of see where that conversation takes us tonight. Tripods it is. All right. Tripods it is. And I, I do want to say, just for, for people who have just tuned in, um, who are who 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 want like the TLDR version, we're going to be talking about one tripod in, speci- in particular, along with our general discussion of tripods, and that is the Peak Design Travel Tripod. Um, we'll, we'll get to that in just a, just a, a minute or two. Um, we actually have one. In the studio here, Phil, Phil's got it, and we'll be talking about that. But before we get to this specific tripod, we're just talking about tripods in general and uh, why you may want one as a parent uh, who likes photography. So, yeah. So, Phil, let's talk a little bit about tripods. Yeah, so what's interesting is I've been into digital photography for, gosh, almost 20 years now, and... I haven't owned a tripod up until the last year or so. Mm. Actually, the only tripod that I ever owned was one of these little cheap, it's like a six inch tall thing that you'd find like on an Amazon. Yes. I've I've got got it. It's like, I know I've got, it's got like uh, a flexible legs. Sure. Gosh, what's the name for those? There's a whole ton of those little gorilla pod. Is that what you have a gorilla pod? Uh, It's, it's worse than that. It's like a super cheap Chinese knockoff. Okay. Um, but it'll hold a camera still. That's and all you need? That's, that's all I need, yeah. So I've used that a few times. Uh, but I've never actually done... So when I, when I think about what you might use a tripod for, I think um, mostly staged family photos, portraits, or um, maybe wedding photos, things like that. Things where you're doing pictures of people, but you, you have it framed up and you want everybody in a certain position and you want that camera perfectly still. Yeah, that's that's what I think of too when I when I think of tripods and and I also think of um, tripods as something that you should have, but I don't really know why. Um, like when I just think of uh, people like photographers, I, I think, well, you got to have a tripod, right? But I don't really know why you would have like what do you do with a tripod, and is it worth even buying a tripod if you don't have one? So. Yeah, a lot of questions about these simple three-legged things here. Yeah, and I feel the same way. I've I've always felt that a tripod is one of those things that someone who's into photography should have, but why? And like I never bought one because what would I ever do with a tripod? I don't take those kind of photos except for the rare occasion where we do something that specifically needs your camera to be held still. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And that comes along once, once in a blue moon. So otherwise, I wouldn't invest in a tripod. Now, in the last year, um, you know, we've got this Peak Design tripod, and Which I actually is came not across... out yet. By the way, just as we record this, September twenty fourth, twenty nineteen, you can't buy this tripod. Um, we got a, a pre release version from Peak Design, and I think it's going to be out uh, maybe in December of this year. So. Um, we'll be talking if you're curious about this tripod, we are going to be talking about this as Phil was about to, until I interrupted him. Sorry, Phil, but I just wanted no to, way to go for that. that. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we got this peak design, peak design tripod and we have both been using it, uh, quite extensively mm-hmm. over the last little bit of time. Uh, and along with that, actually, I, I was given a, like a garage sale tripod, something from the eighties that I found out in the last couple of days has never actually been opened. Wow. It was so sealed a, in the box. So it's a relic. <laughs> so, yeah. And I've been playing with both of these for a while. But um, yeah, let, specifically, let's let's talk about this this Peak Design travel tripod and what's 
actually it's it's a little bit like those um gorilla pods in mm-hmm. in, in one sense because it can, it's it can be very compact but it's also expands to a full-size tripod and i've used it in in kind of both modes for doing things where you need your camera pretty low and then other things where you want it pretty high off the ground so yeah and it, it's interesting you know just tripods in general we've i think i've got um the first tripod i had actually used to belong to my uncle or our uncle paul and i think before that it used to belong to our dad that sounds about right i mean and, that makes sense and i i got that like back in 2004 five maybe i don't know and then in about 2000 and i don't know seven eight maybe we uh, my wife and i got like these honker tripods manfrotto 055 xdb tripod legs we actually bought the legs and the heads separately and i still have um i have that uh, one of those the other one i i let dad borrow so our dad has it um and i use it a couple times a year when people come to visit like phil when you guys came to visit last we want i wanted a group photo so i busted out that tripod and we went down to that bike path that that uh was near that children that kids museum took mm-hmm. group photo couldn't do it without a tripod but for the other 363 days a year it just sits there so i don't i don't know uh if if you're a parent and you don't have a tripod i would say you don't need one <laughs> and if if you do need one one of these little gorilla pods phil mentioned i would say that works th- that's going to work just fine and if you need a, to put it on a chair or something to elevate it to get a group picture, that would be fine. But I, I don't know that I would go out and like rush out to get a tripod if you don't have one. But if a use case scenario presents itself, then by all means, I, I would say go and, go and buy one. But don't feel like you're suddenly somehow lacking as a person or as a photographer if you don't have that piece of gear. Save your money. Buy something else. Buy a set of close-up filters so you can do macro photography or something. But if you have a hankering for an upgraded tripod that's like pretty awesome it's peak design one <laughs> it's pretty darn cool <laughs> it is it is uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy that we uh that we were able to get one yeah thanks and, to the folks uh, at peak design we, yes we thank you very it. much this is this is uh super awesome simon and i have both been using this mm-hmm. and boy it's nice it's really nice so so uh, since i you said that you kind of had uh, some questions, uh, discussion points on this thing, and I, because uh, well, we're in, we're in different states, and mm-hmm. so we're, we're not here in the same studio. We can't share the right. thing, and so I've I've got it here, and I can try. It. For those of you um, listening on the audio, if you're able to to go back and, and watch this on YouTube, uh, you probably would benefit from that, because mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to try to show as much as I can here of this thing as we talk about it. So yeah. Uh, Where'd you you start with this thing? um, So I guess Phil, if if I could ask you a couple questions about this thing that I think regular people would want to know um, you, it's called the travel tripod. What, what is that? Like, should I only get this if I'm going to be on a trip or is this like for every day? What, you mentioned that it's like a gorilla pod. What do you mean? Is tell me about the size of this thing. Yeah. Okay. So um, it is more compact than any other tripod that I have come across. Me too. The, but that doesn't mean that it's a small tripod. Okay. It's. I mean, it expands to fifty-four or fifty-six inches tall, um, and so it'll do. It's actually more compact when it's all the way down than this other one from the 80s that I got at that garage sale. Seriously? And it's also taller than that one when it's fully extended. Okay, hold it up to your head so I can get a size yeah. comparison. Um, this is the... Okay. Uh, oh, was that not going to work? No, no, no. I'm going to just break the fourth wall a bit. I've got a new webcam that's that's one of those that just sits on top like okay. this so I can move around. Okay. I'll try to use this a little bit and show you... Oh, it's okay. I got gotcha. you. Sorry if this is weird, but I'm trying to figure this out for the. <laughs> put this there. So this is uh, this is what it looks like. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, this is what it looks like fully compacted. Bring it back uh, a little bit so it's, it's like. That's there you go. 
that is not that that is not that big. <laughs> it, it, it looks no. I mean, it's like it's half the size of a baseball bat, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not even it's not that heavy either. It weighs maybe two two and a half pounds. Um, there are two versions of it. This is, I believe, this is the aluminum. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, there's and there's a, a there's a carbon fiber one, which I'm guessing is more lightweight than this, but probably just as strong. Uh, but even this, like I said, it two two and a half pounds. It's not it's not that heavy. Um, and and I've used this kind of all over the place, and I just carry it around like it's nothing. It 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 definitely that was one thing I noticed in using it. It is uh, for sure a lot smaller, and because of that, I found it to be a lot more practical. Um, my my experience with that tripod, I took it to a family trip in Minnesota, and we flew up there from Oklahoma, and we spent like six days going from Minneapolis to different like different parts of Minneapolis, then to St. Cloud, and. I mean, every day we were going to somewhere else. And not only did I bring that tripod in my carry-on in the airplane without even thinking twice. I mean, it was super small. I brought it with me to everyone's houses, and I got, like, so many group photos because I had this tripod with me. And any other tripod, I wouldn't have gotten any of those pictures because I would have just left it at home. Thank you and... for bringing that. See, that's what I love. That's that's what's so great about something that, that is this compact because it is very easy to bring with you. And it comes with a little um, a pouch. Like the thing fits, it's like a sock. It fits down inside mm-hmm. this sock and then it's got this elastic band on top. When, when I have this and it's being stored or I, I just, I clip it on the side of another camera bag or a backpack. Mm-hmm. And then it's so easy to carry around that way. Yes. I just I use the bag that it came in. I just clip it on, and that's it. I don't really even notice that it's there. I, I'm I've had the same experience. I I didn't uh, bringing that tripod on that trip was not an issue. And I it like you said, it was the same size as my Gorilla Pod. I have this like sixty dollar Gorilla Pod, and it's great, but f- it's like twelve inches high. Whereas that Peak Design one, you you mentioned the dimensions of it. I don't remember exactly, but it was just as high as any other tripod. And I remember in my um, uh, in our Uncle Paul's backyard, we had like 20 people. And I wanted to get a group photo because we don't see some of these people very often. So I got everyone together and I got out my tripod because I've had it with me. And there was nothing about it that felt cheap or chintzy or inadequate to the task of getting a group photo. And it was kind of this flawless experience. It was, it's the tripod I never knew I wanted until I yes, had it. I, I can vouch for that completely <laughs> because it doesn't, it's not, it's not weird. And you don't feel like that weird guy who's got to bust out, hang on, let me run to my car, get my tripod because it's so small and that that's just something I never considered before uh, in it when when getting a tripod or when thinking about getting a tripod is how small it would get and I, I wouldn't think about traveling with a tripod period I just wouldn't but that's exactly what this is for it's called the is they called the travel or what's the actual name of it I, it's I called the peak design travel tripod travel tripod yes mm-hmm. okay so it really is that simple um yeah, I, I would not have uh, – so every summer we go to a lake in Kansas, and I always bring my tripod with. But it's this big honking tripod, mm-hmm. and it literally takes up a, a not insignificant amount of space in the trunk of our car. And every summer I kind of have this little mental debate like, well, is it worth bringing this big tripod? Do I really need to – and I put it in, and – this summer, I didn't have to have that conversation with myself. I just took the Peak Design tripod, and the, it didn't take up any noticeable amount of space in the car, which was super nice. If you take just two water bottles and stand them on top of each other, that's how big this thing is. Yeah, it's that. It's just it fits in one hand. It's like a really tall water bottle, and that's really about it. But can we talk about the? The yeah. utility, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. Was, I, that was my next question. More and more, when I features. use this thing, I'm I'm just amazed at how Wait. how much utility is actually 
packed into this thing and it sounds like it i mean it's, it sounds like we're advertising here but it's good th- this is just amazing i was just floored when i started playing with this thing there, there's a little secret that i hope we remember to get to that you mentioned to me after you loaned it to me and said hey check this did you find that thing yet and i'm like no what are you talking about <laughs> do, you, do you know what i'm talking about yeah i, th- oh, I think so <laughs> that was just so cool so um hold on are you where are you looking you're you're looking down are you i'm looking- sorry i'm trying to let me move this camera oh, that's again. Fine. I know. For those of you on audio, you don't have any of this. <laughs> Phil, Phil was like looking off to the corner, and I'm thinking that maybe your dog's down there. Maybe. <laughs> Yay, Phil's back. All right, so no, Phil's we're back. good. Sorry, it's it's awkward. Um, if only I had a mount that I could put a camera on. If only and keep it in one if place. Only. All right. So tell us a little bit about the features of this tripod. Well. Right off the bat, it's super easy to extend. So I'll try to put this up on the camera there and we'll see how it goes. Um, it's got these little they release call... clips. Yeah, okay, okay. Just pop and open like that uh-huh. and then extend the leg. And each, there, so there's three legs obviously, and each one has four extensions on it like this. And the extensions are almost as long as the base unit itself. These are probably, I don't know, 12, 14 inches long a mm. piece. So you just open them up. There's two, three, four. And if you're, I don't know if you can see this or yeah. hear this, or this, but that's, it's super that's tall. Super I don't know, do you, you know what, how tall this thing yeah. is? I'm not sure. I'm gonna open the other the other legs and kind of stand this next to me. As a uh, yeah, and Phil, it, see if you can show that on the camera. Phil's actually opening all of them kind of in one motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll, do, like, I'll do it here. Let me get the next leg going. And what I do, Phil, I actually reach. Hang on, my, I got to flip around. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I actually reach my hand around, and with each finger, I put each finger on one of those levers and just all at once go. And pull them yep. all back at once. Absolutely, yeah. So, I don't know you can see the four levers here, yeah. and I'm backwards to myself, but I'm gonna just put Boop. them all up at once. One, two, three, four. Look at that. And then you just pull the leg out, all all in one big shot, and snap them shut. That's it. Beautiful. That is so no. slick. My other tripod, it takes like 30 seconds to get it set up. And I have to, I have to like unscrew each um, segment because it's like a thumb screw, and I gotta like unscrew and then tighten, unscrew and then tighten, and it's those little things. Like we can talk about um, on the internet saying would be first world problems, but it does matter if I'm trying to get a shot with my tripod. I'm like, oh, I gotta lug this big tripod, and then gotta unscrew, 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 tighten, tighten, tighten each leg the 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 uh, uh each one of those little things together adds up to me just not wanting to mess with it <laughs> it becomes cumbersome it, yeah, it, yeah, it's just oh, yeah, an yeah, annoyance yeah, yeah it is and you're right it's absolutely a, a first world problem you know it's a thing with the tripod and there, there are bigger problems out there but that's our show so <laughs> we're yeah talking about this tripod. is what we're talking about man uh, yeah and and it's just you can expand this thing and get it ready in a matter of seconds. It's just boom, mm. ready to go. And then I'll try to. There's also a, an extension off the top. Phil, I'm so glad you're showing this. I this is great. Um, so there's another a rod that extends down the center mm-hmm. here, and there's a little release wheel for that somewhere. This is classic Peak Design, Hopefully by the way. They, peak Design, if you've never bought any of their products, we don't get uh, – we they didn't, like, pay us to endorse this or anything. Um, we're just reviewing this tripod. And they think about all these little details, like that little thing Phil just popped out, that little uh, thumb screw to release that center column. It actually pops in and out, so it's, like, it doesn't Let stick me, uh, out at you. What I'm going to do is at, maybe you can see it behind me. I can, uh, yeah. This, try to bring it in closer. This is the thing fully extended. Mm-hmm. Comes up to about my my nose. That's awesome. And I'm what, I'm I'm five ten, so I don't know how how five 
something is how tall this is. It's exactly five something. Yeah. And <laughs> I, at the little mechanics, the little, like you said, the little things that are so well thought out. It, it kind of reminds me of the way that, you know, those classic Apple videos with Johnny Ive where he talks about all the, the aluminum carvings yeah, and how yeah. everything has its place and everything is perfect. Yeah. Um, it's like every little bit of this was thought out so well and I know exactly what each thing is going to do and I don't have to mess with it to get it to work that's that's a good it's description just, it's, like it's intuitive it's intuitive mm -hmm. not cumbersome so, so I, t tell me about that head so in this let me, I'm, gonna, I'm going to oh, okay, go ahead. lower the tripod so I can bring it back into frame okay. and we can talk good about idea. stuff on top there and while Phil's doing that, um, one issue that I've often had with tripods is it, they work great as long as I want to keep my camera flat. But if I want to move it around, like adjust the, the pitch or the tilt of my camera, I have to kind of un, like shorten one of the individual legs to kind of get my camera to sit flat. I eventually purchased a separate ball head for my tripod and that was like a hundred dollars just for the head and it's this thing that sticks up from the tripod i should i should almost go and get my you, existing... you tried to talk me into buying a ball head once but i didn't even I, have a tripod at the time that's... and you tried to talk me into buying a ball head for the tripod that i would someday own because of how, how which much is, utility ball heads are great is in the thing and that's but... that's fantastic it's just but in yeah, making those adjustments to the to the way that your camera faces mm -hmm. is it's really again, it's just I, I don't have a better word for it than either cumbersome or just intuitive. Yes, on or or or, or limited. There are other cases where it's a pretty limited uh, mobility, and but a ball I... head gives you almost what three hundred sixty degrees of of movement. Yeah, and it just. And if you buy a, a cheap tripod, and I'm not knocking cheap tripods, but if you go to Walmart or Target and you see one for like 60 bucks, and you think, oh, great, this is a tripod. I can finally have one of these nice things to hold my camera steady. Chances are it won't have some of these smaller touches like Phil was talking about, but it also probably won't have the bigger things like a ball head. And Oh, keep, for sure, yeah. And keep, like you are talking about, $100 extra for a ball head is a lot. It is, yeah. A lot to to spend on just that little attachment. Mm -hmm. So I would highly recommend finding a tripod that has one if you're interested in, in getting this. I would too. And you know, it's funny, you were, you said earlier about this little dial on the side that yeah. adjusts. The, uh, so I've got it, I've got it locked in tight now, so I cannot uh, put this mm. extension back. Yep. And I, I did not know this until you said it a minute ago that you can just pu pull this out a little bit to work it yeah because your fingers can't that. grip it it's stuck to the side so there, there it is normal yeah and if i want to loosen it <laughs> there you go oh Boop. you just pulled out see that <laughs> yeah it's awesome and isn't I can, it I'll loosen it a little bit put that down close it back up i, I didn't know that it did that until <laughs> until just now <laughs> yay <laughs> so tell us about this, all right so this um, ball head no i want you to talk about the ball head because you've had experience with these before you you okay. own one right You've had one on a on a previous yeah, tripod. Yeah, that that I I, I mean you still have one. I feel you like I should one. go get it, but really the point is to talk about this Peak Design one. Um, <laughs> right. But but so on this Peak Design one, the thing that makes it different from a normal ball head is on a on a regular tripod, this mechanism to allow your camera to kind of shift and rotate and tip back and forth, that ball head sticks up like five inches from the top of the tripod you got this extra thing sticking up and there's these knobs and levers that stick out from the side but somehow on this peak design tripod not only is the ball head flat and flush with the top of the tripod it all the the little mechanisms to adjust it are built right into the ball head so if you want to Tip as you camp. describe this, Simon, yeah. I'm going to try to just demonstrate yeah. on here. Okay. So like I said, since we have one okay. and we have both used this thing a lot, um, I'm gonna, if you could kind of walk through some of it and I'll see if I can demonstrate on here because I don't know any other a better way to just show 
how intuitive and really smooth this thing is. Well, and I'll say this, Skype is cutting off the side of the frame. I see a, a square of you. All oh, right, thanks Skype. Well, I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna just gonna move. The, so. Perfect. I'm going to pull one of these. Phil, I like it. <laughs> it's like fourth <laughs> wall breaking, like you mentioned here. So this this ring, oh, well, first of all, you might need to extend the middle column just a bit to get it to go up. Otherwise, we'll lose that, that frame oh, yeah. of movement. All right. Let me, so I'm going to just adjust a little wheel there. Yeah, perfect. Put it up. Yep. Tighten that back down. Great. Okay. So now let's say Phil has his camera mounted on top. If he wants to tilt the camera one way or other, that collar that he's he's got right here, if he loosens that collar, suddenly he gains 360 degrees of movement with that. Check that out. It's, That's it's super cool. It's just so awesome how how <laughs> well this works and how compact it is. I love this thing. And, and it just it's like it just floats on there. Hopefully you can see that okay. It just it's so smooth to have your camera locked in on top and oh i need to my whatever it is i'm taking a picture of is a little bit off so you don't have to grab some lever or uh, like a handlebar and make adjustments you just intuitively you just turn this little dial to loosen it what with your hand on there like your hand stays right there yeah it's like one-handed you, you make your adjustments and then you tighten it back up and now i can't adjust it like yeah, that's like, it totally solid and your your camera actually clips into the top. It, it comes with a mounting plate that you attach to your camera. Yeah, which I did not bring down here, unfortunately. Um, and then that mounting plate just sort of clips right in there. And it's it, a little. Yep. Bingo. A little a lever right there that pops in and out. Yeah, this mounting plate has a standard. Um, I think it's called an Arca it? Switch. Standard tripod mount. Mm -hmm. the, the little threads on it. So you put that on your camera if, if you want to keep it there. And then you just you just dock your camera. You just snap it you in and this thing it. goes like this. <laughs> it's like exactly that. right. It's and like docking. Just, and then that's it. And then you yep. can even lock that thing in place so it can't come out. You double lock it. You lock that retainer ring around the side. But then you also have a second little lever. Yeah, yeah Phil's showing it right now where you can. So here's your, here's your, uh, here's that little, this is the, the snapper. It grabs the camera mount, and holds it in there, and then there's this other lever right here. I spin this around. It's you kind of see it going around brilliant there. Brilliant demonstration, Phil. Thank you. And if I spin this around here, all the way around, those marks indicate how how locked it is. And now, this little the whatever I call it, the little snap plate thing, does not move. Your camera is locked in there, and you don't have to worry about it falling out. You don't don't have to worry about the mount coming loose or anything. Uh, but you still have that that full freedom of of the ball head on there. And then as soon as you get great. it positioned, you just lock that ball head. Yep. And now, it's, I'm ready. Okay, so I just I lock that in. Done. Now I can't move it. And it's even got a built-in level. There's like a little bubble level it up does, on top. Right? There Come it on. is, that little green level. Yeah. Right there. And so you can pop your camera off, check to see if it's level, pop your camera on. I mean, it's really well thought out. I, I, you wouldn't think that a tripod would be like how, what, what is left to innovate on a tripod? It's three things that hold up a thing, but yet you get this peak design one and realize there's a ton of stuff that they thought of that I would have never thought of to innovate on this tripod. And they, it, it's like a home run. They really did a great job on this thing. Um, Phil, you mentioned a little yeah. secret yeah. earlier. Yes. Like so you had asked me after about. after I had this for a little while and was testing it out. You said, hey, uh, did you find that cell phone holder? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, no. And this is it. Like, I, I, this is the whole thing. There's there's nothing else to it here. Mm -hmm. And I, I had no idea what you were talking about. A cell phone holder for this. I'm like, first of all, what would that, why? Yeah. Like you got a nice fancy tripod here. And why would you want to hold a cell phone with it? But hold that thought. <laughs> oh, I've got it. Actually, I've got the thing removed. But 
let me try to demonstrate here. So, and I found this a little bit later. So in, in the center, this extension rod right here, the one that adds that extra height to it. Mm -hmm. Which also has a clip on the bottom if you want to attach a bag for ballast. If you want to keep it extra stable, you can clip like a little a bag of sand or something on the on the bottom right there. Right. Yep. So anyway, I wondered what that was for. Yep, it's a ballast the, the clip. Mm -hmm. But there's a little mark on the side of here, and you can pull this thing out. And it oh, just pops off. Look at that. And there's a that channel is hollow. <laughs> This is weird, but hang on. This channel in the <laughs> middle is hollow. And what comes out of there... Whoops, I watched that. Up. What comes out of there is this little thing right here. And this did not look like much to me, and I didn't know how <laughs> to use it at like first much. either. So, so this... Are you kidding me? That's magnetic? Yeah, it's magnetic. What? Yeah. Not sure why, but it is magnetic. What the? Yeah, I guess if you want to like stick it on the I side of the... I did not know that either. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. So where's my phone? There it is. Let me show you what this looks like. Just this little flat kind of trough thing here. And you pop these ends up. You get sort of this weird, yeah, I don't okay, know, so channel sure. thing. It looks like a little hangman thing. And it's got these notches in it. This, this is one of the... It's so perfect once you figure out how to use it and this one did take me a while i've been talking about how everything else was so intuitive i but i found this thing and i'm like what the heck how does this work <laughs> well it these these things hold your phone i'm gonna try to step aside so you can see here and then you can actually just pull this apart and it gets longer to hold pretty much any size cell phone so watch this sweet i'm going to put the bottom clip in there it's extend like, the top that's a galaxy note this is a galaxy note 8 so, so it's, it's a, a pretty it's a big it's, one, phone, it's on the yeah. bigger end of phone yeah and how well i don't know can you see that okay yeah it's clipped right so in it just there just attaches so, on right, right on there and i never used that clip so i'm i'm in uncharted territory here just watching you so i've used this all the time so now <laughs> now crazy. what do you do with it so now right now what do you do with it well you uh struggle because you don't have many hands but all right, hold on. I'm going to come back to this. I'm going to release the little locking mechanism mm -hmm. on the vehicle doors. And then... Nice Jurassic Jurassic Park, Park drop. reference, yeah. So, I'm, so remember this thing that sort of popped in yeah, and out? little clippy guy. Just drop the phone. This is awkward. <laughs> trying to do it on camera I'm, here. Yeah, I'm trying to do this on, on camera. No, no, normally, this yeah, is super smooth. Yeah, clip it in smooth. off right. camera and then... Uh... All right. There. Just Check dropped it in there. that out. I'll try to go over here. So it's a tripod that can work for that your cell true. phone as well as your camera. So there you go. It's got It's got the phone mount in there. And it just uses that same little clip. That's awesome, Phil. Sorry about the video again. But no, it just uses the same great. little clip. So you just pop that out. And there it is. Now you got your phone back. That is slick. It just it's it's really neat to be able to do that. And they it it'll hold pretty much any phone because of the way that it extends. Yeah. So you just stretch it out. Now you're back to this. Close it up. And then that fits. All right. So here's the, there's that center column. Yeah. That has the extension. This, gone. Just tucks right up in there. Yeah. And then we're, I lost my little cap. That little <laughs> cap goes right in there and closes it up. Sorry, I'm in my own way. There you go. That's it. You know, and, I tell I, you what. I did not know that that was there at all, and I've got a whole different subject that I'm going to get to on a different topic, on a different show, talking about <laughs> that cell phone mount. Well, and I tell you uh, what, um, the, the the idea that um, you can use this tripod for just holding your phone is another way that it will entice you to actually bring it and use it. 
And even if you don't bring it anywhere, like you're just in the front yard with your kids and you want a family picture, knowing that you don't have to also get out your DSLR, if you just want to use your phone, you can do that. And instead of setting your phone against a tree or having someone else hold it, you just get out this tripod, which is already super small and light, you clip your phone in and you take your picture. And if you're going on a, a trip, like you're actually traveling with this, you don't need to think, do I bring the tripod and do I bring the big camera? And just bring your phone, which you already have anyway. And then this tripod is really hardly any extra weight. And now you have this this ideal device to take pictures of your family on your trip. So it really does work well. Yeah, I feel a little guilty, actually, when you said that, because I had some friends here uh, just a couple of months ago, and I had this at the time. (gasps) St. Louis! Yeah. You didn't and, bring uh, it to St. So, Louis, did you? No, 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 no. They were here. They, the, so my friends in St. Louis were up here, um, and they had just had a baby, and so they, oh. they were here for a few days. We took some family photos out front, and I didn't oh, Phil. get this thing no. I, I, because I'm not used to it. And I yep. could have, like you said, just snap your phone in there, put a timer on it, and go. Yeah, like that's That's awesome because you're right. You don't have to mess with – mounting your camera and getting your your professional camera ready if you don't have a professional camera it doesn't matter yeah. this thing is 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 set is designed to work with any cell phone that you have and if you have a professional camera um i i was able to put my my nikon d750 with a battery pack with a 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens that's a heavy rig I was able to put that on this tripod and it held it just fine. So it really does go to uh, like any camera on the spectrum, which is really nice. Um, Phil, there's a couple, a couple nitpicks I want to get to, and then we got to end this because I got to get to bed. Um, The thing, like not everything is perfect with this. My main complaint would be the mounting plate where I mentioned I brought it on this trip and I have my Fuji X100F, which is like the perfect camera. Everyone should get one of those. And that was my camera that I brought on this trip. And every night I wanted to charge the battery and to take the mounting plate off of the Fuji, uh, off of my camera, you need a, a hex key, like an Allen wrench. And it comes with the tripod. But where do you put that Allen wrench when you're not using it? You're supposed to store it in the tripod bag, but th- it's a li- it's like an IKEA Allen wrench. It's easy to lose that thing, and without that Allen wrench, you can't get the plate off your camera, and you can't get the battery door open if your camera's battery door overlaps. Right. So, so that Fuji you're talking about is it physically? It's a pretty small camera. It is. Yeah. It's compared a small to camera. a lot of DSLRs. So yeah. that battery door is could be easily blocked on something like that it really could and um i know you can you can probably get like some sort of thumb screw attachment i don't know i I actually did order a thumb screw attachment but it didn't really work uh because it was from some third party but that mounting plate was um like it's not a deal breaker but it's just one thing i had to remember to bring that uh hex key and make sure i didn't lose that and I think Peak Design is working on a fix for that. I think they're working on a way to attach the hex key to the tripod legs. Um, so whatever version is available to buy in December, I think it'll actually have that fixed from what I've heard. Um, and it, I wouldn't say don't get this tripod over that, but it is something to keep in mind. There's other like little things. I mean, it it takes uh, a bit of practice to learn how to work that ball head. But um, like that's... I mean, at this point, we're kind of grasping at straws. Overall, the complete package, I I can't really recommend it enough. But the other caveat is the price, which is a lot of money. <laughs> so, um, yeah, unfortunately, it's not. It's no sixty dollar Walmart tripod. No, um, uh, and it's if you want all this, all these features in such a great tripod, it's gonna set you back. Um, I think the retail price on the, the aluminum version is like $400 and the carbon fiber is like $600. Now I could be off. It might be it. I I don't want to get this wrong. So don't quote me on this, but it might be like $300 and $500. Um, I'm probably getting the price wrong, but it is going to be expensive. So is it worth it for 
just casual photographers for parents who want an occasional tripod? <sighs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, no, I would agree with you there. I, I, if if they hadn't been generous enough to send this to us to yeah. test out, um, I be perfectly honest, I wouldn't spend that kind of money on a tripod. Yeah. I got, like I said, I got a garage sale one for free and it's going to do the job well enough. It just doesn't have all of these fancy, well thought out mm-hmm. little adjustments to it. It doesn't have the ball head. It's not quite as compact. Uh, it's not, it's not as tall as this one. You know, there's a, there's a bunch of things about it. Yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you what though, if you are the type of family that travels, even just a couple times a year, and you want to make sure that you have the opportunity to get group pictures, even if you're just seeing family and friends. That's all we did when we went to Minnesota. We flew up there, and we just saw family and friends. We didn't go sightseeing, but I wanted to remember the people that we were with. Like, I mean, I'll remember them without pictures, but I wanted group photos. So I brought this tripod. And it was fan. It was awesome. Or if you do like sightseeing, and you're you want to uh, have a picture of your whole family without handing your phone to a passerby and hoping they take a good photo because we've all been there. You hand your phone to someone, you get the photos back, and they're like crooked or their fingers over the 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 camera. This tripod, if you think about it, you're gonna buy this once and you'll have it for the next twenty years. It's it's a solid, durable tripod. When you amortize that cost over the next 20 years, let's say it's $300 over the next 20 years, that's like $15 a year or something. Um, at this point, like if you work hard enough, you can justify anything. But it really is the the kind of tool that is useful to have in the situations that you that you need it. If you don't have it, you'll be okay. But if you want to make sure you have a really good tripod that you will take with you unlike a lot of other tripods and that's the key that's the key it won't be cumbersome to bring along yeah you won't have that question of do i bring the tripod you'll bring it because it's so small and it's going to accommodate almost any photographic situation i can think of for the next one or two decades maybe it is worth the price i don't know you'll have to decide that for yourself so well here's my take on that yeah you know it like i said that we we have a pre-release version here. It's got some quirks, but it's a great, great tripod. It doesn't come out until the end of the year. It's a couple of months away still. If you're really serious about getting this particular tripod, save your money for over that time span, over the next couple of months. Or if you don't have a tripod and you kind of are intrigued by the idea of all of this stuff and the utility of something like this, Get yourself a cheap tripod. Go wait till Black Friday or something, and and just Good get idea. yourself something super cheap. Good idea. And go on eBay or Craigslist. I mean, it doesn't matter how old they are. Mm-hmm. I, the one that I got free at a garage sale it was probably twenty years old. It had been in someone's basement, and it works perfectly fine to do the things a tripod should do. Yeah, it's good. So point. get yourself one of those mm-hmm. and try it out. Bring it, bring it on a trip, or or if it's too cumbersome or too big, then use it in your backyard. Use it around the house. Just play with it and say, "Hey, I I really like having this tripod." But that ball head that they were talking about, I wonder. <laughs> hmm, I wonder. And so, the, you, give it a year. You know, buy a cheap tripod now. Give it a year, and then if you think the utility is something like this, yeah, go for it. Yeah, and in that year, just put away 10, 15 bucks a month, like stash in a coffee can. And if you decide at the end of that year that you do need something that this, that your cheaper tripod doesn't have, then you're good to go. And you got the money for the Peak Design one. So, <sighs> Phil, we've been t- discussing this tripod for quite some time. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, yeah, anytime. Um, well, like I said, thank you for, for, letting me use this yeah thank um, you peak design for letting us <laughs> use this <laughs> very huge thanks to peak design for for letting us have this pre-release yeah. uh this test with it um it's fantastic and i've actually got another project coming up that hopefully will be be out soon uh 
within the camera dad's realm that actually uh, I've been using this and my other tripod for. And I couldn't do this this thing. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's kind of some backyard photography. I couldn't do it without a good tripod. Yeah, so I'm super eyes... happy to, to have been able to use this for that. It's a cool project for anyone listening. We're, I you know Phil's kind of teasing this without saying too much, but it's a cool idea. Stay tuned. I think you'll like yeah, what he's got in store. Yeah. All right, Phil. So I can do it. That's gonna do it. Uh, I'm ready for bed. I am. Too. I know you're ready for bed. <laughs> so. All right. Well, thanks, Phil. Thanks for doing the show. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the show, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. All right. See you later.